As you can see behind me is a covered bridge. It is 300 feet long, two 150 foot spans. Before we got here, there was a four span, three span steel girder, one span steel truss. And even before that was a railroad bridge. The existing structure uh, was built in 93 and I was deteriorating very poorly the last couple of years. We actually had it shut down to one lane for the last few months before we demoed it for this project. This area gets a lot of tourism and we just knew that the cover bridge here would magnify that even more. The concern was with the community was how long was the road going to be closed? Can we get it done in a certain time? And as things fell together and, and the funding agencies came together, then we started looking at functional bridge was the number one concern. We want to make sure it's functional, but also be something that we can be proud of. I am one of two construction monitors for District 11. Christine Margita is my direct boss, and she's been here for over 36 years. Shout out. We bring a wealth of experience into the project, and we help facilitate a local to get to that level, we, we encourage the local taking ownership of the project. This is their project. We understand that and we want the best project for them. And during the course of the project, getting them to understand that as well, that they make the decisions, but they do it within federal regulations as well. Palmer Engineering was drawn to this largely because I'm a resident of Holmes County, have been for, for a long time. Uh, I've worked with Chris and other projects, and this is the premier project that's happened in Holmes County, probably will be in my entire lifetime. So when the uh, request for proposals came out, I, I told the rest of the guys that I work with that we got to go get that project. So our first response was, let's go get John Smolin on board because he's the granddaddy of Timber Bridge Design in Ohio. At this time, there are 135 covered bridges in Ohio. That's the total number. And that's what we do because I've done a couple dozen of them over the last 40 years. As a bridge engineer and doing construction on both sides of it, it's kind of a once in a lifetime opportunity to be part of a covered timber bridge. Wood is a good bridge building material. After all, in, in pioneer days, that's about the only kind of bridge you had was wooden bridges. Number one, the, the bridges have longevity. The oldest uh, remaining in, in, in the United States is over 200 years old. The oldest covered bridge in Europe is 600 years old. All the issues that come with the timber bridge, John had to handle the worst of them at Smolin Engineering, but we had to tie them into the ground, really, the skew and all of that. Also, there were hydraulic issues. And then the big one that came up was during construction at the Ford abutment there, rock was not where we thought it was. And, and so we had this big old spread footing with not as much rock as we needed. We knew with the construction schedule being very aggressive, we had to crunch those numbers and get a, a solution to Chris right away to, to cozy and keep things rolling. The existing bridge was a railroad that we do not know when it was built, so there were no existing plans. After demoing out the abutments, getting into the actual foundations of the bridge itself, there was wood piling, wood lagging, concrete, and it just made it very difficult for us to drill. Steel and concrete are very precise and they're fed up. When you're dealing with wood, it's a living entity. It, every piece of wood is different. And then this skew on the end, the angle then, kind of was really, really difficult for making all the timber fit because so many timbers were all individually sized. To square off the end, we had to run the, the short side out so it would look square on end, look proper. When we design a steel structure to fit up with a wood structure, that's when the really the teamwork really came together and myself, an engineer on the project, and OHM was detrimental in expediting all that process and coming up with fixes quickly and not holding up the job at, at all, which caused us to finish four days early. The biggest issue I think we had was public interest and the staging of the project. We had to know where we were going to set the trusses, where the cranes were going to be to set over the Mohican, and we had RVs on either side of this bridge where there was a lot of tourism, a lot of interest coming into this project that was going to be a big area of concern for the county as well. The Spellacy family, um, the father was a very big, big advocate for this area um, and this river and then he passed away before the construction of the bridge was done. So his daughter actually uh, gave a speech for the grand opening. She talked about the history of her family and how much her father would have loved this bridge and appreciated it, and he never got to see it. So a very emotional time for her and also everybody else involved in the grand opening. In the midst of all the issues that we had come up throughout this project, none of it could have been possible without the different partnering with uh, OHM, ODOT, and the county. 
all working together to pull this fast turn turnarounds with RFIs, all the design issues that we had, pretty much everybody coming together and really digging into this and making it the project that it is today. It was kind of a refreshing process going through with Kikosing. It was, we laid things on the table, uh, had open discussions. There were times where we disagreed with each other and that's fine, um, but we always came away with respect with each other. So this is an impressive, impressive bridge when you drive up to and drive through it. My, I know my architect was very pleased with how it came out. Kudos to the Kokosin's carpentry team because you could have cut this up and, and, and hacked it up and made it all fit very easily and, and, and quickly, but they took their time and, and really put in a great amount of effort to just make it look spectacular. This became a generational bridge where many generations will be able to move forward and enjoy this bridge and we're allowed to pass that on to the next generations. Yeah, I can't stress enough how great it was to see everybody come together and the involvement from OHM, the ODOT, and the county. We couldn't have done it without the teamwork.